Armor. It's never a case of winning two games in a row and going home early. Not between the University of Queensland and QUT. Not in the rubber series after two years of back and forth action. Of course, for the third year in a row, we are going to go to game three here live at the Element Collective in the Valley on location. This is it. This is for all the bragging rights. One more game, one more match. Winner takes all. Yeah, it's, it's it, like I said, bangers all around, uh, but definitely some uh, drafting concerns that's costing UQU. I think the players are playing, uh, they're happy, they should be happy with their play, but definitely need to have a hard look at the draft if this game three is going to be competitive uh, in the way the game one, more towards the way game one was, probably further than that, I would say. Yeah, I think this is definitely going to be a very telling matchup for sure. I mean, so far, some of these storylines we've seen, UQ's drafts have been kind of questionable. UQ's aggressiveness has been keeping them in the game. Yep. However, top lane been a constant issue. This Nargragas matchup not going in their favor two games in a row. And then the sort of twist with the bot lane, the inclusion of Rusty coming in for QUT, really being that bot side playmaker, which kind of helped Bobby elevate and get a 21k Kaisa game. Yeah, he definitely did elevate. I think Rusty did have an impact there, although Rusty was also getting picked off a few times in the later stages of the game, so probably uh, things to work, be worked on on either side in that regard. In terms of top lane, uh, this is just a losing matchup, like, plain and simple. Uh, I don't think that it should be this losing, but he's not getting solo killed in lane. He's, he's down, yeah, he's getting Flame Horizon, but... Uh, realistically, you change the draft, you change your itemization, you tweak a few small things, you send the jungler top one path, maybe, just to help him get one wave in, and it changes everything. So this is not just a uh, individual gap, even though Tron the Palm is definitely um, making a lot of money moves. I would say that um, it's it's definitely a team effort that's costing uh, UQU here. Yeah, and well, you only have one more chance to sort of fix these team errors and these team mistakes. It's one more game. And one of the great things about the series, though, is you've had two games to try and learn, to try to adjust, try to adapt and get in this one. Had a quick chat to Clint, actually, before coming into this one. He was like, yeah, that Vayne pick was good, but, you know, are you ready for something even bigger up next? And I, I have no idea what it can be. All I know is it has me excited, and I hope QUT is ready for, you know, a little bit of cheese on their burgers, perhaps. Man, there is there is nothing that this man says that's wrong. I swear, Clint the Paw Plant is a, is a hero amongst men, uh, and I'm sure whatever he brings to the table will be will be a, within uh, the banger uh, adjective. <laughs> I, I have to agree. I mean, it's been bangers all around so far. You know, it's been a proper Australian sausage sizzle almost as we're no, getting done. so close to kicking far. this next game. I'll have to change my analogy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ruined it for you forever yeah. now. Onions on top, don't worry. We, we do it right here. Uh, but as we're still waiting to go, I'm also hoping to see a bit more from almost both sides mid lane so far because it's been a very bot and top focused series up to this stage. Mid laners have constantly been playing sort of more of these supporting control mages. Do we start to see something crazy like a LeBlanc or maybe a Zoe get let through in this third game? Well, I think there is 0.0, .0 chance that Zoe gets through. But I do think that... Uh, Either mid laner being on a champ that can be proactive and make moves could be interesting to see. Uh, the way control mages work is that is you can, you have two paths to a control mage. You can either farm and scale for free, which is kind of what like the Victor did last game, the Oriana did the first game, um, and Vagar as well. But the other option you have is to really use your priority to make dives or two v twos mid jungle uh, happen. And you can pl choose to play through a control mage. It has to be a choice because, like I said, control mages can just sit and farm. Um, so it, it's interesting to see if they make that adaptation. I actually doubt they will based on what I've been seeing. Um, but anything's possible. It's game three. Everything's on the line. Yeah, this is going to be where everything gets laid down and already so many comfort pits being taken away. Obviously, a middle and that Zoe, not going to be allowed. Tron, his... Signature Vladimir on the amateur scene, not going to be let through. Bobby, no more Kaisa, and I mean, no Nar either. A lot of top yeah, focus this time one. around, but the Gragas is still the go to for Lithium. Third time's the charm, perhaps. Well, like, I liked his Gragas. He was making nice plays in the mid to late game. It's just he was down 100 CS, and it's, uh, it's like you can't ignore that, right? Um, the Gragas is really a good early pick. Nar is its worst matchup. 
Um, so now that they've banned it, I'm really interested to see how this matchup will go and what they'll pick into it. What's interesting, though, is Bobby is going to get that Jin, and this Jin has been banned both of our first two games against Bobby. So they're giving up the Kai'Sa, probably more fearful of the champion than necessarily the comfort Bobby has on the Jin. Either way, these are the adaptions that you see in series like this. And back to the control mages, but one that can dish out a lot of single target damage, a middle and Syndra. It is a good combination. Yeah, Syndra is definitely a lot better against the Skarner. Um, if you don't let him get right on top of you, you'll be able to E him in most scenarios. I'm actually wondering if there's something cheeky coming because normally you'd want to pick uh, your jungle and AD to match here. Okay, so they do pick the AD, so jungle is dropping. Okay, uh, well, they haven't locked it in yet, but I mean, we'll see if they do. I was promised spice, and last I checked, you know, well, I should say I was promised cheese. And I guess you can age cheese, but 200-year-old cheese Gets kind of green, that's gets kind of smelly. Like, it's a good pick for the comp, all right? No, and it's that's a, a nice, funny joke. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a nice change in style for UQ because now they're no longer playing this up front, in your face, bruisey comp. They're actually playing a lot further back this time around. So I guess they are showing a new style, but I was expecting a bit more from what Clint told me in the past. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed, but I guess we'll have to see what the jungle pick is because they've already shown jungle and they've still not locked it in. So uh, I'm assuming. Scott has some Scott unshackled has something uh, uh, up his sleeve here, which we'll have to wait and see for. But yeah, so Gragas and Syndra are both really good disengage against the Skarner. I don't want to see Gragas ulting someone who's been Skarner ulted though. That would be very awkward. <laughs> um, otherwise, yeah. So Aphilius has, feels pretty good in this situation. Um, you definitely don't want to be against something paired with that Galio that can access you in the backline. Uh, but luckily, Gragas is good into champs that are uh, like Camille, for example, who might be picked here by QT Esports. So I'm really liking UQ's draft so far. Yeah, it's looking pretty solid on all fronts. This is definitely the biggest chess match of the draft phase I feel we have seen yet. And Tron hovering that Camille, that could be a very mm. interesting pick. A lot more side lane threat, I feel like, than what we saw from the NAR before. However, it can take a little longer to get going. It's, it's an interesting strategy. There's also a lot of dive being put together on the QUT side as well. Yeah, so like I said, they need something to access this Aphelios. They're going to need to find a way to protect it now on the side of QQ. They have already got some tools that do that. So UQ's comp is winning into QT's comp. But QT's comp as a whole is still technically good by itself, right? Camille and Galio are a really good combo. It's a very traditional combo. And it can definitely get onto that Aphelios if Camille ever gets a flank. Um, but look at all this disengage from UQ, more disengage, more peel. We see the Kindred come out, which is, again, more peel. <laughs> so I, this I, comp is really pretty. It, it is. I, I, I think I'd almost rather something more like the Thresh, perhaps, than the Leona. That has me a little bit concerned, because Le when I think peel, the yeah. champion who goes in with no escape is not who I think of. No, yeah, no. Aphelios, Aphelios Thresh is, is a go-to uh, 2v2 bot lane right now, and... Uh, Thresh is really good in this scenario, but I'm, I'm guessing it's just a player pool thing. Perhaps, perhaps. Yeah. But I mean, or it's, I think it's 100% a player pool thing, actually. It's Deanne, right? Like, all he knows is go in. <laughs> that, that We've learned that thus far. He won the game, what, going 0 and 9 or 0 and 10 or something like that last game. Like, he's going to engage. He's going to try to force plays. I just worry that's not really what UQ is looking for. And to play a passive Leona is to play a sad Leona. And you can do it if it means your team will win, but you're going to feel sad the entire time. Yeah, I definitely would have liked to see, like, a, like a, if it's not a Thresh, maybe a, an Enchanter, um, like a Lulu or a Seraphine, if that's, if that's available to the pool. But I don't think we do uh, have that optional option. So, yes, Leona pick is not ideal. The Thresh pick is, is good into the Leona pick as well. Um, and it also, Thresh opens up a lot of angles with the Skarner and, and peels for the Jin and stuff, which is all problematic. But overall, I think four out of five of UQ's champs are good in, out, into four out of five of QT's champs. So it still, to me, feels like a winning draft for UQ, although less so than if they'd picked the Thresh there. Yeah, I think this is going to be a very evenly matched game based on this drafts alone. I'm excited to see what QUT can actually bring to these team fights because just for pure excitement levels, okay, let's take strategy away for a little bit. Let's take, you know, the stakes away and just look at these team comps of, like, what they do. Q 
QUT's comp is fun. They have so many sort of engage Absolutely. go buttons and turn things around, death sentences, heroic entrances. Big like, plays. Big plays are going to be coming from this QUT side, and they are going to need them. My big concern, though, bringing it all back together, though, is how are they going to find their ways to sort of initiate their plans? Because they have a lot of good crowd control tools in the middle of fights, but they don't really have any go buttons. And against the zone and control that we see from the UQ side, I don't know how QUT finds ways into them. Yeah, so in a comp like this, with a flanking champ like Camille, it's all about who goes in first and how far they go in. So if, for example, you're contesting the dragon, like I'm expecting every team to in this meta, um, Camille's going to be looking for flanks, and UQ is going to be trying to stay in a position where they're unflankable, but they can protect their carries. Uh, so um, I think that it's going to be it's going to come down to positioning and team fights, um, and UQU, if they're balled up as five, should never be threatened. It should never happen. But if QT managed to ever pull them apart then it's all bets are off. And that's why I do like that Camille pick at the end of the day, because Camille is going to be a champion who's going to be looking to spread out the map in a sense. If Camille gets that side lane going, I feel like that's going to force UQ to not play together. Granted, whether or not that Camille can get going, that's yet to be seen. That depends on the sort of jungle priorities, pressures, and all of that. But so far in the past, we've seen Tron get two massive leads over Lithium. And if that happens for a third time, if that prevents UQ from grouping S5, that could be the way that QUT perhaps can get late into this game. Yeah. This is a winning matchup for the Gragas, whereas the NAR was a definitely a losing matchup. Um, so I think that it will definitely swing a, different, a little bit differently in that regard. Um, but it's, it's hard to say. I, I do hope that Jungle jungle priority is put into this top lane uh, just to prevent anything happening where Camille gets somehow gets to stabilize and, and control the game. Uh, otherwise, I just expect it to be played through the, uh, the mid-jungle 2v2s and uh, scaling bot lane. Counterpoint to jungle scaling involved more in top lane. Uh, we remove top lane from Summoner's Rift, maybe on like an elevated bridge platform, and they can continue on their island for now and forever because it really feels like with the way the current meta is, just everyone just seems to ignore top lane for the first 20 minutes. That's been, that even after 20 minutes, they just kind of ignore top lane, and it's until the top laners come back down to the rest of the game that they get involved. It's really been so apparent, I feel, this year, more so than in past years, that top lane really is its own sort of special bubble. Yeah, I, I just I just say that because I really don't want um, some cheesy thing happening where Camille gaps the Gragas in some way. Like if it's if you think it's bad when Gnar's up 100 CS, when Camille's up 100 CS, the game the game literally ends. So um, I just want to make sure nothing bad happens, and then I want to be playing through the mid jungle and <laughs> and going to ball in basically. I still want to impose the no mercy rule in League of Legends. I know people always call it the mercy rule. I want to call it the no mercy rule. If a team has a 10k lead at the 20 minute mark, the game just ends right there. We just we just call it, we're done. And typically that happens when a Camille gets a 100 CS lead over their opponents because, I mean, it's not a 10k lead, but it may as well be. Well, if it's like a 100 CS to zero CS, then yeah. But I, I more what I'm expecting is he'll get up early and then uh, it'll snowball from there. Uh, and uh, at some point in the game, he'll just be two items to, to, one, to one, and the towers will be fallen. Well, we are on the rift, everybody. This is game number three, UQQUT, and we get our level one action. Death Sentence connects, and down goes DN. QUT strike first. Uh, what the heck am I seeing in the chat? Uh, yeah, that's massive right there. That's, uh, it's very... It's a really heads-up play from QT to be looking for that. I think that's uh, what you'd be looking for every time, and especially at this level, people will just be caught with their pants down. But Leona's uh, didn't flash, uh, didn't react in time, so I wonder what's going on there. As we get to see, you know, a little bit of banter coming through at the tail end of it all. Yeah, Deanne picking up right where he left off in <laughs> games number two. Um, oh, no. It's not, it's not been a good... It's been a rough night for Deanne thus far uh, in this matchup, and hopefully... We'll be able to turn it back around, but Leona lanes historically are just in these situations where when they fall behind, it's so hard to climb back out of. And I know, you know, one kill onto that Jin means an extra set of mobility. They went for the boot, so it's not necessarily more damage. It's still going to be a tough lane. Yeah, this is, uh, this is actually pretty rough because Jin is one of those champions that really benefits from boots. He managed to pick those up. 
So I don't ever see a world where this Jin Resh isn't getting priority. It's also a Dark Harvest stack as well. Ah, well, yeah, another cherry on top. <laughs> but you can already see this Gragas is actually uh, pushing the Camille a bit further, uh, whereas the Gnar, the Gnar, the Gnar would be like smacking this wave in and, and generating the Pryo. Gragas actually has it for the first time, so definitely the matchup's going better already. Oh, nice scatter of the week mid. as well. Uh, Get a little bit of poke. Gnar and Samaria are my two favorite champions. Just oh, no. the, the two of them together, that's the combo that we want. Oh, God, Gnar. Yeah. I can't believe I said it. Yeah, you know, it's okay. Again, Samaria earlier. That was me, all right? So we're all good here as we do uh, continue. Nice. Scatter nice. the Week going to make contact on two major. And I like that, you know, cheeky little harassment on the enemy jungle, keeping track of them, stealing a little bit of their camps. It's these little things UQ like to do. Very aggressive team, it feels like. Yeah, they, they want to push their lead. They want to do whatever they can to uh, accelerate it. I like the way they do it because it's intelligent, you know? Syndra gets her wave in, so she looks for something. It's not it's not uh, forced. It's just there. The opportunity arises. And they're always prepared to make that call, which is very nice. And that is one of the things that you see from the best teams. This is the ability to make the best out of every situation given to you. And UQ so far tonight has been doing a great job from that. Uh, and now that they've put together a draft that we're each finally happy with, we would expect that to continue. Yet, they are starting this game off a little bit of a disadvantage due to that level one pick. And with Dragon spawning now in a minute and a half, a lot of attention I feel like is going to be put on these bot and mid lanes to try and get that priority. I'm curious who's going to try to make oh. that first move. And it looks to be Deanne connecting with that Zenith Blade. Stays on the Bobby play. Though will keep Bobby safe. And on the flank is Major going straight oh, after no. Deanne. Leona forced to flash with the follow flash into the death sentence is there. And Deanne will go down this time. Major the one securing the kill. Yeah, see, that is just un unbridled aggression, and I'm not a fan because you can see Kindred wasn't even close. This Garner had to be bot side. We knew that he just cleared his top side, so uh, this play is just doomed from Leona. And really, feel I really feel for Aphelios in this position. He's just had to sit and watch his sub die twice. Uh, on the other hand, on the other side of the map, I, this is a little thing that I think the observers couldn't see, but. Gragas actually failed to um, crash his third wave, which enabled Camille to get this slow freeze, slow freeze, and then slow push back. Oh, this could be something. There's the root. Rusty getting taken quite low. Does not have flash available. Zenith Blade is a nice play, but it's not nice enough to stop the sun, but it is enough to warrant a teleport. Clint is able to find the first kill, and it looks like Clint will go down as Bobby turns it around just in time for Westy to cut off any chance of the escape. Deanne's getting punched, but the minion block may have stopped Bobby from finding that next kill. Not going to dive for it. And in the end, it's only a two for one, or a one for one, rather. QUT continue to have a lead. Yeah, but if you can just see, like, regardless of what just happened, Balling, which obviously is uh, more unbridled aggression without jungle presence. Uh, Top lane is actually going really poorly again, and it all comes back to the fact that he couldn't crash his wave, his third wave. So Camille was able to freeze and slow push back. And now Camille has just gotten a 20 CS lead, or I guess it'll be equalized to about a 10, but that's not good in this matchup. And then he will be able to uh, base and buy his sheen, and Gragas will probably not even get the chance to base uh, on a good base. Okay, he crashes and bases, so he, at least he gets that. but. Definitely not the way this matchup should be going, so very unfortunate there. And well played by Tron the Palm for executing that correctly. As we do see a little bit of a stalking happening in the jungle, Death Sentence makes contact, and the follow-up route is there. Take the lantern, Bobby, and find yourself another kill. In fact, Major actually wants a doing? piece of this, <laughs> and it will be given over to Bobby, but a great setup from Rusty. Yeah, this is very... They, they are punishing this support. I feel... I feel... Like it's, it's uh, it's coming. It's getting to the players' heads now. They, what UQ needs to do is slow the game down. Support needs to play more passive and just let their mid jungle start to dominate. Look, there's already a 10 CS lead in the jungle and a 20 CS lead. I want to say, yeah, almost 20 CS lead. Yeah, in mid, in, uh, in mid. So this mid jungle is doing exactly what they need to do. All they need to do is slow the game down and let support do what they want. What, oh, what as we get to wants. see a bit of action happening here, Unleashed Power comes out already, and the Scatter Week doesn't hit anyone. That leaves Scott alone to go one on one against Major, but with no help from Wesley, Scott would actually have won that fight. So QUT does back away. I mean, we questioned this Leona pick. We were hoping perhaps, you know, we'd see a bit more, but at this stage, you know, 
It, it really is danger, DN, at this stage. He just lives for the danger, will dive for it at every opportunity, and UQ's getting burned a fair bit. Yeah, this is the situation where you make a call. You either, you either put your sub, uh, you put him in his place and say, look, man, stop fighting entirely and let us carry. Or you make the conscious effort to say, look, if you're not going to stop fighting, I'm going to come and fight with you. And I think, I think that it's not ideal, but it might be a call that UQ can make here. It's, it, it's synergy in the chaos. Take, take a page from the old school LPL, right? Just, just go in. Just do it. Play as a team, no matter the circumstance, yeah. no matter the odds. Perhaps we could see that from UQ in the future. I mean, you've got an objective to fight for. It is that Mountain Drake, or perhaps there's another fight in the bot lane. Clint, I think, got caught out by a death sentence, and Rusty is going to take a kill for himself. Yeah, this is just dominance. Uh, good hooks from Rusty. Good follow from the Jin. It's not even a jungle issue now. It's just straight up 2v2 dominance. And that wasn't even with an item advantage, so that was actually Aphelios' mistake. It's spilling out. Uh oh. Oh, this is. This is going from bad to worse. It looks like a good trade going in Tron's favor. Yep. I want to point out, we are just now hitting the eight minute mark. Five kills already for this bot lane. 100% kill participation from this bot lane. We've been talking about how this is kind of a bot-centric meta in a lot of ways, and especially if it gets into that late game, we might see the effects of that a lot earlier as even in mid lane now starting to feel the confidence from it, just for picking trades even when minions are against you. Yeah, and... and it, this one is even more rough. Look, no trading again. Uh, this isn't even the Scott that likes to take the Herald when they take the Dragon. He's just conceding, conceding control everywhere and it's snowballing even harder now. No bueno for UQ as again. Uh, this is a solo kill. Yeah, Lithium thought the lane was safe. It was not. Hextech ultimatum will be the grave of Gragas. Nice flash. flash for flash. One more oh. auto. Tron had to work for it, but eventually does get a slice of the fat man as down below, we're looking for a possible gank, perhaps using the blast cone. Rusty and Major are there. The curtain call could mean curtains for UQ. Zed is playing, trying to buy some time, but with the heroic entrance, here comes the turnaround. A two man knockup. Clint's already gone. So too is Danger Deanne. And QUT accelerate this lead. Yeah, that was a nice E from the Leona, but it was not enough. I think both flashes were down, which uh, just made that, that heads up play that much better. And at this point, it's looking real rough. Uh, yeah, this is uh, not the look UQ is looking for. Not even 10 minutes in this game, already a 3k team deficit. No longer 100% kill participation though for the bot lane. Uh, that, that's been ruined by Tron. Crisis. Terrible, terrible, terrible Just stuff. Now. Not a team effort, dare I say. Uh, I think the mentals on UQ need, need a little bit of a reset. They need to slow the game down and realize that uh, this game won't be decided in the next 10 minutes if they don't want it to be. Yeah. They can play the game slow and look to trade objectives, look to get gold, and look for a better fight later game when they have items on their carries that like to scale. Well, we will see where they go from here. But a little concerning, though, is typically with these lost trades, we've been able to see Scott get objectives on the opposite end of the map. But even that has been sort of slowed because all of it's happening way too early. Those objectives weren't even there half the time, and now Scott actually is the one who will be the focus of QUT's approach. They don't oh, wind up no. getting much there, but down below, Clint and Tron again continuing to trade. Uh, these lane assignments are so bad. Like, Aphelios cannot farm into Camille. It, it, he's going to have to let the wave come in, and Camille's going to get a move mid now. Yeah, uh, the lane swap at an opportune moment. QUT just showing no quarter to UQ. And what's interesting is if QUT wins this game, not only will QUT sort of take the lead in the overall series, two to one, just like the game series here today. Oh, come but on. it would be the third reverse sweep, I'm pretty sure, in a row oh, as really? well. Yeah. Wow. That's that's unfortunate for for UQ. Did they lose last year? UQ? Uh, no, QUT uh, lost last year. UQ won last year with the reverse sweep. Oh, okay. Well, I guess we'll win next year if this is what happens. Yeah, it's, it's the back and forth, right? Sweep for sweep. You know, it keeps things interesting. It keeps everyone on their toes. No, but we're not... We're not Neither side has got this guaranteed yet. Aphelios sure. is a big win condition late game, and, and we'll get there in a second. Like, for example, one play that UQ can make here is concede the Herald, concede top tower, put three people bought, and just funnel gold into the Aphelios. I want them to be trading like this. Right now, they're trying to contest everything, and they're so much weaker, they're just going to lose out for it. That's just been UQ's MO, though, all series long, is contest, is fight, is look to be aggressive. And for the first time tonight, we've really seen QUT sort of take advantage of that. I feel, just in terms of matching a lot of it, or more so in the bot lane than anywhere else. Although now you see QUT get a bit aggressive, a nice little pick play set up by Rusty. It won't turn into a kill, but it will take into a safe Herald. 
Yeah, they couldn't kill the Fat Man, but they could kill the Herald. I, I think that um, in the first game, actually, Scott did a good job of trading. There were a lot of times where they just had to concede the objective, and he did manage to get a Herald for it or a camp for it. Um, but in this game is not an example of that, and you can really see it's uh Oh, oh, this could be bad for Clint. The hook shot lands true, and Tron's looking to chase Deanne, looking uh, to try and stop no. it, but dodging the it Solar Flare one is one Tron. And now it's a 1v2 situation. Oh, Teleport's coming through. Too little, too late. Deanne does not get out of this one alive. A double kill for Tron as up above Shelly gets dropped. And this tower is not long for the world. QUT, they are going full speed here in game number three. And what were you saying about mercy rule? The no mercy rule. QUT should show UQ no mercy. Ah, uh, yeah. That's what it's looking like right now. That is all. Oh, the tower actually might be saved here by Lithium. The last little shot from Bobby won't bring it down. So small, saving graces, I suppose. It doesn't look like QUT wants to give up on this just just yet. A middle has arrived, and that's Scatter of the Week. If it connects onto Rusty, we could have seen something. At the end, though, QUT does the smart thing. They back away. There is no good play for UQ here. Uh, I, I hate to say it, but when Aphelios died like that, it gave away their, any opportunity for them to trade, and it was such a dramatic way to lose it, too. So Camille's just managed to get, I think, three plates. Uh, while they broke the entirety of, almost the entirety of top tower. You can see a fellow is doing some nice damage there, but but realistically, it's it's gonna be a game of mistakes from QT to get, that's gonna be, that's gonna enable QQ to get back in this game. Yeah, I mean, look, and it's not even like everyone on UQ is necessarily playing a rough game right now. 10 kills for QUT, nine of them from the bot lane yeah. of UQ. It, it has been, a bot focus approach, I suppose, although a lot of it did come early. It came from Deanne perhaps being a little out of position. Once that small lead was established, that's when Rusty has been starting to step forward and try and make plays, and QUT has just been capitalizing around it. They pretty much control the entire bot half of the map or wherever Bobby happens to be at this stage. Tron has also gotten accelerated because of that top lane matchup that happened to go the Camille's way, despite what typically is the case in this matchup. And when you control both the side lanes that dominantly, it means you control the map. Yeah, uh, I think it's just been total dominance is the is the word. I I, I am a bit disappointed in um, the side of UQU, uh, their mid jungle, because yes, your bot lane is inting. Yes, your top lane is losing in a winning matchup. But you guys have the opportunity to play proactively, and it just didn't happen. You can see a 50 CS, 60 CS lead from Kindred. Like, this man is power farming, but and he might even be power farming the enemy jungle. I haven't really been tracking that well, but he hasn't killed anyone. Yeah, like it's not. It, there's not been no proactive plays at all from this, this TV too. You want to see those kindred marks come into play as Bobby looks to be able to escape. No, and not even flash used. Nice item. Yeah, it's just unfortunate. Again, UQ, this bot lane trying to make plays, and now it's going to explode in their face a bit as the curtain call does come down. Flash hooks a minion. <laughs> so hell? first misstep from Rusty we've seen, and oh. Active Man leads to the UQ counter engage. But here comes Major swelling Clint in a oh. terrible, terrible okay. spot. On the flank, though, is one Scott, and he's going to drop the Lancer Spike to try oh, and nice. keep Clint alive. But for how long? Bobby does get the final blow eventually as the rest of UQ is sent running. Two more kills taken by QUT. Rusty able to find his opponent's support. Lithium sidesteps Whoa, the death end, nice. flashes Happy the taunt, and looks to escape. But QUT has already dealt the damage. Another two picks for the red side. Yeah, and I just I just see Lithium making all these nice mechanical plays, but it's just so sad that he's mismanaging his early game, his waves, are, uh, and he's just falling behind. So he's never in a position to, uh, to actually impact these fights more meaningfully. Um, and yeah, that was just dramatic. Another dominant performance. I think UQ has to force uh, a numbers advantage for them to win this game. They are not going to win these these five v fives. It's just it's it's too far gone now. Yeah, it, it does seem to be the case moving forward. And like the thing is as well, that again was started by the UQ bot lane trying to force a play, trying to be over aggressive, and it just kind of exploded yes, back in their face. It, it's been a reoccurring theme in this game and. Sometimes under pressure, you know, it can go two ways. You can either start to get over aggressive or play really passive. Typically, it is the passive approach, like fight or flight. More people are kind to flight, but UQ, they've been generally an aggressive team, so it's not that surprising that they turn to that fight and they're thinking, let's just treat forcing. Eventually, something will go our way. Yet, QUT, they're looking far more disciplined. They're looking far more in control. And right now, they are in complete control of this game three. Yeah, so the, the fundamental concept here is. Every time you take a fight, you have a certain percentage chance of winning it. 
and the more fights you take and you lose, the lower your chance of winning the next fight cap becomes. But you never know when that next roll is going to be the nat d20. Well, yeah, but the the dice becomes bigger and the punishment becomes harder, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, the, so the sides of the dice, so, I guess. So we're using Vegas dice now? You're saying they're weighted? Uh, more like uh, anything below a 20 on a d100 is a... Uh, I can't do this analogy. Yeah, Basically, a D a D one hundred is the only fight. Like a one in one hundred chance is the only way they win, and the next fight becomes a one in two hundred chance, right? It's just incremental growth on the side of QUT, and that's what we're looking right now. Yeah. So the, the answer is for UQ to to not fight for a while and farm, and that enables that dice to spin back in their favor a little bit. But oh, some shots coming out. The current uh, yeah. call does force a middle out of the play, but more importantly, it was a catch on to Scott. And with that, well, numbers advantage, damage advantage, every single advantage really going in QUT's favor in this one. It's a little unfortunate they don't have that dragon to collect, but that's okay. They're going to look to collect champions instead. That was a blind hook right there on the lithium. Everything just going their way. The Hextap ultimatum stops the blasting cone, and eventually the fat man will fall. Yeah, it's looking, it's not an if, it's a win. That's what it's, that's where we're at right now. Uh, will the game be will oh? the game be 20, 20 minutes or 25? Oh right my! Nearly gets the pick on the Bobby, but just a little bit too tanky. That was a close one. Hex Flash, here comes Rusty. Death no, Sentence not going to connect, though, and that will force QUT back, but I want to go back to that blind hook right there. How does Rusty know? That was great. That's a highlight reel play right there. Uh, if they make a montage, that'll be in it. But that was absolutely incredible. As we do see Scott again trying to lead that charge with the end by their side. The health bars do look low, but with that lantern, QUT should escape. Scott still trying to get those pot shots. Bobby's recall will be stopped, and all of this is happening, I think, with Dragon in mind. UQ, they might try to contest it. Yeah, it's uh, it might actually be theirs. I think this QT can can uh, afford to give this one. If, if there was ever a moment for UQ to contest oh. a dragon, this would oh, be Zenith it. Oh, Zenith Blade on the Westy, but the Galio seems to be a bit too beefy. And now Deanne is going to go down yet again. Another kill going to Tron the Pawn. And any chance UQ had at the dragon probably just went up in smoke. I'd be interested to see what stacks Kindred is at. Right oh. now, because I think it's oh, not. No. Lambs are spite, will only keep Scott alive for so long. They're going to try and jump over the wall yet. The lingering damage is enough to bring down the jungler, and that means no counter spite. That means no dragon play. QUT get another objective and just continue to run away with this one. Yep. Dominance. That's the only word I can use to describe. This is not a banger. This is, this is dominant. Well, I think if you're a fan of QUT, it's a pretty big banger right now. No way, man. This is too one-sided for me. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just it's just it's not even the draft this time. It really just came down to punishing punishing a playstyle uh, of of over aggression from UQU and props to QT for pulling it off and making it work. But uh, I don't really see a world where UQ can get back into this game now. Yeah, I, I have to agree. This one is looking pretty much done and dusted. It's just a matter of when and where. QT looks to end this game. Clint forced to flash, but the current call with that slow might hold him in place. Deanne trying to turn things around, trying to stop Tron from diving in, but here comes the hook shot, and down goes Deanne yet again. Clint will be that next target. Heroic entrance <laughs> used to try and jump onto Lithium, but they don't quite synergize it correctly. Either way, that's already a double for Tron. Did he get the triple? Yes, he did! Tron the Bomb absolutely popping off in game number three. Tron the Bomb. Tron the pop off. Tron the pop off. As Rusty tried to death bush, probably is going to have to try to get out of this one in middle. Not willing to commit on that. And QUT, I mean, every little thing going their way, why not get themselves a Baron at this stage as well? Yeah, just the cherry on top. Uh, I feel like they should put this, uh, this beast out of its misery, to be honest. Yeah, that could be oh, the. Oh, okay. there you go. I think that's uh, a telling sign of where this game has gone right there as Baron is going to be secured. Not looking good for UQ. Yeah, I think that was a big play and actually might be the way that UQ gets back in this game thanks to Kindred's uh, mechanical outplay there uh, on the tower. Yeah. I mean, if Scott really wants to sort of match the power of the bot lane, still has to do that another four times. <laughs> Yeah, well, I wonder if Syndra gets a death this game. Yeah, actually, that's a good question. 
Let's see if a middle can finish with a perfect game in this one. 0-0-0, zero, zero, zero. quite of a, an impressive scoreline, all things considered, and the way things have gone for UQ. On the opposite end, 10-0-3 on Tron, and we thought this was going to be a bot lane carry side. We thought that the matchup was good for UQ on the top, but this Camille has been putting in work and then some, and no, th this is what you fear from the Camille 35 minutes in, not at the 22 minute mark. Well, this is exactly actually what I was warning about uh, when I wanted to see at least one uh, one move from the Kindred. Layup for Spike comes down. Scott looking to try and escape, but Westy's there and will secure the kill just in time for the Tron the Palm flank. Won't lead into follow up damage. Instead, QUT, they're going to play this one slow. They're going to play this one patient until they find Deanne on the flank. Hexag Ultimatum oh, used dude. on the Leona, but that was like one auto that did literally half of the shielded Leona's health. No way you get out of this one. Oh, Rusty somehow so escapes close. on a sliver as Major stands in that front line. Heroic entrance doesn't get anyone except Skarner was already able oh, to find the Batman. Max. Super dive by Clint. Damn. He does go down a triple kill on yeah, the backside the for this Bobby side. QUT, they win the fight and it looks like reclaiming the throne as the university team to beat in Queensland. It's going to be the QUT side. They take down an inhibitor, but they don't end the game yet. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that if this if, if this is a there's a repeat uh, rematch next year, I might have to step in and help out with some drafting on the side of UQ uh, and uh, coaching in that regard. But uh, props to QT. They played excellently today, and then their execution was immaculate, especially in this last game. Uh, this is just, oh god, you see you see Kunja's items, I wonder how this is going to play out. Mmm, I mean, oh, there you go. As it looks like, it was the GG, the surrender vote, which ends it all. QUT, they win the rubber series and the rubber match, reverse sweep. They are the Briz Asia champions. Yeah, and props to them. It was, uh, it was hard fought in the first two games. Uh, last game, I guess, it just slipped out underneath UQ's feet, and uh, QT capitalized. So I'm just going to straight up, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to propose something to you, real quick, real quick. MVP for the series, uh, is, oh. it, is, it, is it Bobby, Rusty, or Tron? Because I feel like it's between one of these three. Uh, it's got to be Tron, I think. What? Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure the team agrees with you on that one. Well, I, Rusty, did, Rusty did win both their wins, so... Yeah. So in that regard, yep. yes, but I would say that the most consistent factor was uh, Tron's dominance. Uh, in the second game, it was uh, more back and forth in the bot lane, whereas in, in every single game, Tron dominated. So probably be in Tron for my call. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to try and break script a little bit. I hope I don't get in too much trouble for this, but I kind of want to interview Tron. Can I, I'm getting the okay. Tron, I know you can hear me. You're shaking your head. No, we're doing this. Come on, real quick. Ah. <laughs> uh, He's, he looks a little, sh he's bashful, bashful MVP, but I want come on. Yeah, I think we're going to steal it. It'll be quick. It'll be quick, I promise. So I think we're going to, we're going to see mine. Just going to pass this one, Tron. So I just want to, we're going to do a quick little history lesson, okay? Uh, MVP week one for Summer Society Invitational for the week. MVP tonight, winning this right now. You're on an absolute tear, it feels like. I mean, yeah, I guess so. I've just been putting in a lot of practice, and it's, uh, it's shown from the look of it. Yeah, I mean, it absolutely shows. Now, going into that last matchup, we were a little bit concerned because Gragas versus Camille, typically a stronger matchup for Gragas, yet you absolutely tore that lane up. Was it just a matchup you're confident in? Is that a wrong take from us? or I, I just know the matchup in and out. I know its weaknesses, and I know how to beat it from both sides. So. Okay, okay, so you're someone who knows matchups in and out. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. We're gonna go to that other thing we talked about. One v one challenges right now. One v one challenge. One v one challenges. You're at two MVPs right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm giving you that invisible MVP title belt. Is there anyone who can take you down? I mean, I don't know, man. I have yet to see someone that beats me in a one v one. I really have. No one beats him. All right. Well, we're gonna remember that. So. <laughs> I'll be in contact with you soon. Either way, we're going to wrap it up here. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been an absolute blast. One last time, congratulations to QUT, our Briz Asia champions. And until next year, well, have a great 2021, everyone.